Hello and welcome in everyone to hopefully the first of what is going to be many of our very wonderful book review series. Within today's episode we are going to be reviewing a very very wonderful book that I found which is called The Six Crimson Cranes. As you can see this book has got a very very beautiful cover, the jacket on it is absolutely lovely. This is the hardback edition. This book is written by a wonderful author called Elizabeth Lim. I had not heard of her previously however having found the book I was very excited to dive in. The beautiful pastel colours, the kind of scenic background all around it very much drew me in. However, funny story with this book, I did unfortunately buy its sequel which is called A Dragon's Promise or The Dragon's Promise, sorry, should I say. I bought this first having had a quick flick through being the usual thing of, you know, shall we dive into this book? It looks interesting, there's a dragon on it, that's going to capture me straight away personally because I flipping love dragons and magic which having a dragon on the cover kind of always insinuates for me. So I had a quick flick through and then what I did realise after I got it was having a look through there was a book beforehand. So unfortunately I had to go all to the book before I could read this one. However that being said I was not disappointed when I actually dived into Six Crimson Cranes. Now I like doing this because I love seeing books without their jackets on because sometimes without their jackets on they are absolutely beautiful. And I have to say, Six Crimson Cranes really did not fall to our, on that line. So the Six Crimson Crane book, if I can, oh my gosh, there we go. Um, if I can get into it, is this very, very beautiful writing gold on the spine. The rest of the book itself is just a standard kind of cream coloured hardback front. But it is this beautiful, beautiful penmanship, the beautiful colours and like birds which I assume are meant to be cranes along the spine, work really, really well. And I thought it was an absolutely beautiful, really, really golden touch. Um, for me, this is something that I love to see because when I read a book, I very much, particularly in hardcover, will take the jacket off because I want to try and preserve the jacket and keep the jacket as still, not still, as pristine as I can, I should say. So to start off with, I'm going to read basically the uh, very short, short synopsis that comes on the back of the jacket, which goes, Princess in exile, a shape-shifting dragon, six enchanted cranes, and an unspeakable curse. It will take more than magic to find their way home. Which is a really, really great short little synopsis of what this book is about. And to begin with, we're going to dive in about some of the characters, some of the people you might meet, and kind of what made this book so magical and so wonderful to me. So first of all, the main character that we are going to follow throughout this story and who I very much grew very attached to was this wonderful character called Shayori. Shayori. Now, Shayori is a woman who I believe on the books just turned about 17. And the story will start off with her very much being defiant and not wanting to live up to the royal life and the regards of having to follow into what helps her cure her kingdom as is normal right within these sort of times. However following this you start to discover various other facts about her and because of that unfortunately a curse is laid on the family. Now what's really really interesting about this is who the curse comes from and without saying too much the curse comes from someone I wasn't expecting it to initially come from. However, diving further into it, you go more and more through this story and these characters that unfold, the story that develops, very much works really, really well. So what eventually happens is you start learning more about this wonderful character who has been written called Rekama, aka um, the Nameless Queen, um, who you can see just above me here. This wonderful person was so well written and generally didn't even feature that much within the story. But the times they did and the art that was written within this book from the wonderful Elizabeth Lim created this elegant character who seemed both fierce, scary and just very cunning all at once. And yet you sit there and you read this book and I tend to, when I'm watching TV shows, when I'm watching or reading books or watching films, I tend to try and guess and see if I can figure out the story and what's happening. Personally, it's something that I really enjoy doing. However, with this book, from beginning to end, there was no predictions. There was, like, so many things happened, and I was like, oh my god, that's just clicked, or oh my gosh, this has worked really, really well. 
Um, but anyway, going back to Shayori, Shayori is this 17 year old girl who does unfortunately get this curse on, which basically involves her having a um, hat or a pot that goes over her head and over her eyes. So you can only see her lips and she is cursed that she cannot talk. But if she does, unfortunately, something will happen to her siblings. Alongside this, her siblings have also been cursed and by their curse, they are turned into cranes every night, every day and turn into men again overnight. So this is a really, really interesting complex curse because Shayori is wanting to go and to kind of like figure it out, save her kingdom, save her brothers, save her family, but also needs to go through with the challenge of she can't talk. How is she actually going to do anything she needs to do? And this is where she starts unraveling and understanding more about kind of the magical abilities that come into this story. Now, her magical abilities are something she had somewhat of an awareness beforehand. And very interestingly, this is where you meet probably one of my favourite characters within the series. And this is Seryu, this uh, wonderful, wonderful character you can see here. Seryu, who can be a dragon and yet a human with certain works that kind of give away that they may be not quite human so as the story goes and as the story unfolds you dive through this wonderful kind of really heartfelt adventure of one that is isolated one that is really lonely where shoyori is going through all these muddling feelings about i don't know how to feel about so and so i don't know what to do here and how do we quite unmask this and it is at a time where she is at her utmost lowest, where she encounters another really wonderful character who is called Takan, who you can see here. And now Takan is a really, really cool character. When you first meet him, like he seems, he reminds me a bit of myself in a way. I could see myself in him in the fact he was so gentle. He was so earnest to kind of help and give Shiori the best kind of outcome that she could, even though... She was basically nothing at this point. She, no one knew who she was. No one knew what was going on. Yet Takan was there. I was just like, I'm going to be a decent human being. And this is what we're going to do. Now Takan is another really complex character. You meet him and so much stuff happens revolving around him. And I absolutely love the way it all unfolds. He has many other interesting characters that come in and around him as well. And I tell you, for a story point of view, he worked so wonderfully well within this book to give this other side, give this side of a character that can talk, that can actually say and do things and be very verbally expressive. And yet the way he works in line with Shiori, the way they work to kind of connect and progress the story so well was absolutely wonderful. Now, as you can imagine, within all sort of books, there is always some sort of love interest, and the love interest does seem to go from Takan and Shiori. Now, what's really, really interesting is, and it's explored so deeply throughout this book, is how they actually get that connection to unfold. It starts off really, really difficult. Shiori doesn't know what she wants to do. She's really conflicted. All she wants is to break this curse and go back to her old life. And yet, in the most oddest of circumstances, as if fortune is smiling upon her, she meets Takan and he works so hard to try and help her, to try and understand what's going on. And even with this array of other characters who are around, you just don't know what's happening. You don't know quite how he's going to actually break through and get through everything. Now, my favourite, there is a very, very wonderful character who comes into this book, so book series called Marjorie. And my gosh, she is like the adorable little sister that you sit there and like, I respect you. You're funny, you're witty, you're going to cause some trouble and yet you are absolutely wonderful at the same time. And having this character come in when they do and having them explore around and see their emotions and their side of view of things, absolutely phenomenal for not only like Shiori's own character development, but for enhancing the story and giving character development of other characters that you wouldn't necessarily see or explore through this one character's experience or from the history or words that this one character is saying and i felt like that made a really really interesting point as for the end of this story it was a absolutely phenomenal absolute roller coaster of a ride the ending completely threw me off guard and i highly recommend it as a read there is so much wonderful stuff to it there is so much magic going on with it the romance part of it it's something personally that i don't want to dive into as much to with books however it's always going to be there to a part and thankfully with this story, it never felt that force. It never felt 
like it was right there at the forefront. The main forefront of this story was about friendship, was about the love from brothers, family, siblings, and was about that anguish of what's going on inside, what has happened. For that personally, I will give this book probably a 3 out of 5 stars. It's an absolutely wonderful book that is full of absolute adventure. I felt like it could explore some more of the adventure within it, uh, for example some of the more magical elements. That would be kind of more of my interest, but as a story in itself, in the world that it is set in, it's a very very wonderful book. It's so elegantly written, there is so much fun, so much love, so much excitement that is within this book. I just, I highly recommend if you haven't already, go pick up this book, go read it. If you're wanting to read it with your kids, there's a bedtime night story, a chapter a night. The chapters are super short and it just makes it a really easy read so you to pick up and go, you know what, we're going to read this chapter and then just put it back down for the rest of the day and go off and do whatever you need to do. And sometimes that's what's needed in a book. So yeah, definitely, definitely go check it out. I want to give a huge thank you to Samira's Art. Uh, on tumblr.com who has given me permission to use their art as well as sally also known as subtleties on instagram both of these people have given me a permission to use their artwork for these videos they her links will also be down in the description below for you to best go check out their tumblr check out their instagram and check out their other social medias so that you can see their artwork they've done things for various other shows or films and books as well so definitely definitely go check them out some absolutely wonderful lovely people and thank you guys so much for letting me use the art so until next time i will catch you all sometime soon stay 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 well and stay your magical selves bye mm -hmm.